Hey, everybody, it's the Drive School Podcast. I am Pastor Good, your host, my my good friend, Michelle Bauman, the director of Why for Life is with us. How are you? I'm great. It's so good to be here again. It's good to be here too. We're sitting just on the other side of the resurrection of our Lord and everybody's breathing just a little bit easier. Holy yeah. Week is is just always, it, it's it's a wonderful thing, but the devil hates it. It's it's a powerful thing. It, it's, um, it's just really, really good to stand on this side of the victory and, and look forward. So uh, with, with the resurrection in mind, with new beginnings, uh, Why for Life is getting ready to do some fun stuff, right? We are. I get to come see you soon. Yeah, that's right. So we're going to be out in California for a gender conference in a couple of weeks. Very excited about that. And then the following week, we'll be doing um, a an apologetics retreat in Oklahoma. We already have, uh, it's already today, it maxed out. We were hoping to get 30 students, uh, 30 participants, and today uh, we hit that number. So that was so exciting. Um, yep. And then and then gearing up for more more to come, conferences this summer, right? Absolutely. So. That's going to be great. So we are standing on the other side of, of um, Holy Week. I feel like Noah is not yet. So we're, we're working our way through Genesis and, and talking about life issues. And we have Genesis chapter seven, which almost needs a, a, an Easter to, to talk yeah, about, because this is where this is where God sealed Noah into the ark and lets the rain come and we'll unpack it all. But like, it, it's one of those places where if you don't have the victory, it, it's really, really hard to talk about this. And so this isn't necessarily just a story to live in the minute of, but this is a story to to hear about in light of the victory. Because if you happen to find yourself in, in one of these places, then then you have something to actually hang on to. So life issues, Genesis chapter seven, Let, let's, yeah. let's go. So many, so many. So yeah, we start with God upholding Noah's life and his family's life by saying it's time to get into the ark, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's time. Uh, the, the rain is coming. And so uh, not only does God take Noah and his family, eight people in total, uh, and, and save them in the ark, but he also sends them animals to care for. Um, the, the two of, of every kind of unclean animal, seven of every kind of clean animal. And, and it's not like they had to go out hunting for these animals and catching them and bringing them in. God compelled them to be there, right? So, so again, God's doing doing all the providing for life. He's bringing the people there. He's bringing the animals there. He's saying, I, "I'm I'm going to save you, right? And and I'm going to provide for you." And so uh, they're told, and they enter the ark, and the door is shut. And God's word tells us that God seals it. Right. Right. And even before we get that, there's there's something important about sort of the, the directive. And it's not just sort of the logistics of how Noah got the animals and we don't have like a Pokemon situation. But it's it actually is um it's important that God would actually preserve his creation. And it's not yeah. sort of us doing it in the face of God who is the bad guy. Um it, it's it's easy to paint a picture of, of Noah somehow just trying to withstand the wrath of God and like he he was told how to, but if he did it wrong, it no good. And, and if he didn't get the animals, well, you know, I guess uh, that's why we don't have unicorns. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but rather, this is this is God in his mercy, talking, speaking, sending, and and, and I like where we're going with this sealing. Yeah, and sealing. That's right. So he seals them in, and that seal protects them, right? Um, so again, these, these eight people and all these animals are carrying the genetic code uh, that he created at the beginning of the world that will carry on life into the future. But that sealing is is really important um, because Noah wouldn't have been able to build that ark perfectly, right? Uh, we have, we have. It's not like he was a shipbuilder by trade. Uh, we we have no record of that anyway. Um, but we do know that that and and this this was a big flood. This was nothing that the world had seen before. But we know that God seals them and He protects them, and um, the same waters that lift up Noah's Ark, the same waters that lift up the the ship, God's ship, are waters of salvation for Noah and his family and waters of destruction for the people who are left behind. And we, we got to talk about that a little bit, right? Um, yeah. Go for it. This is not like the murals that we we use in our Sunday school rooms. And and I understand sort of the 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 desire to sanitize Noah's Ark, but like you, you, you just a picture it. I mean, if you're stuck in a boat for 40 days and 40 nights with animals and there's nowhere for the smell to go, um, if, if you, you, it's wood, it is not that thick as, as the water is coming down, you are, know you're the only one there and you know that nobody else can get in and the door is now sealed shut. Um, I actually, I, I deep down think that this was a mercy that, that God gave, uh, to Noah to, to seal the Ark shut. Um, because, how would you not want to claw it open 
right. and, and just see what you can do for for somebody. I, the, the idea of of sort of compassion, even for yeah. the unbeliever, even for the unrighteous, even for the evil. Um, there, there, it's easy to hate the things you don't really like interact with that close. But once you actually are close to somebody, and then you are hurt by them, if if if, if you are actually somebody that that you loved uh, and, and has nothing to do with, it, I, I don't think it's hard to to fathom the idea that our, our Christian youth right now have more unbeliever friends than believer friends. And I, I understand deeply the desire to, to see them saved, even if it starts to then turn even against the will of a, of, of a righteous and just God. If it was me, I, I would be scratching at the door, even though if I managed to get it open, the only thing that would happen would be my own death. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, we, we by nature would want to, to get as many people on that ark as possible. Right. And, and God makes it impossible because God is a God of justice and a God of love. And, um, and he's going to carry forward, um, the faith and he's going to do the things necessary to preserve life, um, and, and to preserve Noah, Noah and his family. Well, and, and not, not even just because it, it's not like God didn't also want more people on the ark. Right. He, he says the only reason Noah is allowed on is because is he was righteous, because he had faith. And and really all it would take for anybody else to, to be brought into that ark as well is simply faith. Like for the hundreds of years that Noah was building the ark and everybody was laughing at him because the sky talked. Um, like you understand that Noah probably didn't keep this secret. It, it was probably actually very difficult. It was it was a laughing stock. And in all of it, um, Noah, who is a righteous man, simply by nature of that definition, then is, is one who, who would also share the hope that is within him. Um, right. The, and no one, idea that, go ahead. And no one else came to faith. I mean, that's what we can, that's what we, we can surmise that no one else heard the news and, and came to arc. faith, right? Yeah. Or they would have been there. Um, and and yeah. there's a right place for compassion, but sometimes um, I, I think sort of there can be a wrong place for compassion, and that that almost sounds like a hard thing to say. But but it, it it's it's a true thing that that your compassion for for some people can actually be exercised in a wrong way, even with the best of intentions. It's not just good intentions pave a road somewhere, but but it actually is sort of a genuine understanding of 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 the consequences we have in this life. There there are places where where compassion and sort of the best intent to to help somebody can go awry, right? Yeah, and I see you. You see that in the legal system, right? Um, you see that when when a judge does what a judge is supposed to do, and we still we feel great compassion and sorrow uh, for for this individual who may have to spend some time in prison, may have to spend some time in jail because of the consequences of sin um, and and the consequences of a broken world. And yet we also know that this this too is is the work of God. This too. Is going to be done to preserve life, to protect the innocent, to protect those who need to be protected, um, and and we can still it, it's a it's a tough thing as Christians uh, to hold both truths to be true, to be able to be compassionate and caring, and to desire for those that have are experiencing the consequences of their sin to come to faith if they did not come to faith, but also to recognize the importance. Of, of protecting those who need to be protected, right? Compassion sometimes, is rooted in, in, oh, go ahead. No, and sometimes protecting from themselves, right? That's actually it though. Yeah. Because compassion is, is actually rooted in the fulfillment of the law. It, it is love for neighbor, but love looks like something. Love actually looks like the 10 commandments expressed as love toward God and um, love toward neighbor and, and a love that is twisted away from or even against the 10 commandments, the first commandment being broken here, but even in other places is, is, is not actually love at all. Um, if, a, if a kid runs away from home because this or her parents just don't understand and, and we, we, we aid and shelter this, the, the reality, they had a home. They, they, they maybe did have some fourth commandment troubles, but, but a love that, that, that actually, uh, furthers these, these kinds of things is, is often, um, a, a love that, that is, uh, not a love at all. Uh, it's good to have compassion for neighbor. It's good to wish the best for them, but actually to recognize that when God gave 10 commandments, it was for our good. And when we, when we rebel against them in this way, in, in terms of the first table towards faith, towards God, and then the second table in love towards neighbor, uh, we don't actually do our neighbors any favors when we, we have compassion for them that allows them to further break the law. And when we ourselves rebel against it in, in the process. So, so God in his mercy, he, he seals Noah in. So it stops being about sort of what Noah would want for his neighbor, because of course God or Noah would want this for his neighbor. God wants this for a neighbor too, but, but Lord have mercy. God, is, he sees in a place that does of the inward heart, that there is no righteousness here. This is just a, a concrete example of what happens spiritually in yeah. unbelief. And it's, it's painful to see, and I don't like it either, but 
the, the, the mercy is even at the same time that, well, once sin is cleansed, there, there is resurrection after death, right? right. We're going we're gonna to keep going. Right. And that sin, that sin we know is cleansed in baptism. It is cleansed in the coming to faith, right? So, so when we look at this story from Christians, when we look at this account, right, this true account of how God saved his people, <clears throat> we see that God's ship uh, that saves, saves humanity and saves his creation uh, continues to be a place of saving today. So, so God's ship is really, um, is really the church. Today, we would say, God's ship is the church. In fact, where we, when we go to church, where we sit, uh, that is called classically the nave. And the nave is a ship term, right? Uh, it, is, it is the body of the ship. And so when you are sitting in the nave, you are in God's ark. You are in his ship. And you were brought into this ship by waters also. Waters that killed the old Adam, that put to death the old Adam, and waters that brought back to life waters that give new life and uphold life in baptism that brings us into the ark of the church that brings us into the family of god and and that reconnects us rather than separates us right uh the 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 fulfillment of christ dying for our sins uh gives us the ability to be in that ark it is through it is through his work that we are brought in to god's ark and and uh, lifted up by the waters of our baptism to new life. And in that way too, baptism seals us, right? It, it also protects and provides for us and, and, um, and upholds our life, uh, enabling, us, enabling us in all ways uh, to, to find hope and, and promise and life in, in him. And just like you said before, can we leave that ark? Can we leave our baptism, gra baptismal grace? Yes, unfortunately, we can. We can be the person that that jumps ship, right, uh, into into the world. Um, but that's not what God intended. God gave us, God placed us in the ark, and that's where He intends for us to stay. Right, even so much so that that when all of us run from this side. We, we also have parables like the good shepherd who leaves behind the 99 to seek the lost. We have Jesus reaching down into the depths of the water to pull up Peter as he as he drowns because he thought he could do this apart from the boat. Peter should have just stayed in the boat. He wasn't supposed to walk on water, <laughs> by the way. Like that that's the point. Stay in the ark, stay in the ark, stay in the church. Uh but but we have a God who who seeks those outside of it. Um and and that's that's a wonderful thing, but it also lets us talk about baptism and, and even just Christian life in a much more um honest way than just sort of the, the baptism where a baby was brought in and now life will be good and, and, ev and everything is happy. Uh, baptism is a drowning of everything that is unclean and everything that honestly just needs to die because it will, it will destroy us and everyone around us. Baptism is, is the drowning of that old Adam, not just once, but every day, that thing inside of me that wants to destroy my own life, that wants to hurt my neighbor, that just wants to act selfishly. Even though I can know objectively, this is a terrible thing. I just cannot help but to lean into it. And God drowns that every day. And every day also raises up the new man to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. When we see a baptism happening, even to a little baby, that's a violent act. Everything evil is being drowned and everything good is being sustained. And it also lets us confront just the realities of Christian life. It, it's not just sort of, if you're in the boat, you will have no problems. The the waters splashed the ark to and fro. The, the, it smelled terrible in there. Um, it, it, was, it was full of what animals make after they eat. Yeah. Um, and this was Noah's salvation. And inside of the Christian church, I, I, I kind of love it because you, you live inside of the parish long enough. You live inside of a Christian church long enough. You start to recognize there's sinners all around you in the church. Right. Uh, it, it's, it's full of them and, and they're a hypocrite and you yourself are one. And, and for all that you are trying to do to build a better world around you, sometimes it still seems like the whole thing's falling apart. And the thing that we hang on to in all of it is simply God's promise. Baptism now saves you. Stay in the boat. I, I will get you to the other side and the right. flood will subside. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Stay in the boat. It's the best advice, right? And and you're right. The the shaking back and forth, the the turmoil in the church, even we see people in the church attacking people in the church, right? Um, and sin doesn't sin doesn't end. But in the boat, God continues to save, God continues to cleanse, God continues to uphold life and and to give us purpose. Um, and in, in the acts that we do. 
I really love the imagery of the boat when we think about, you know, if you go into old churches and you see the buttresses or you see the the way that churches are created, sometimes they're created in a, in a cross, right? Um, but oftentimes, even in modern churches, you see um, if they have the wood exposed, it's supposed yeah, to look be. like the nave, right? Like the bottom of a boat, like we're in it together. And so that physical imagery not only in the ceiling of the church, but also in baptismal fonts, which often have eight sides, right? Eight sides for the eight people that God saved and from them continued life. Um, even there, we see our symbolism reminds us of, of this good gift, right? This, this saving boat, this saving ark uh, that God provides for us um, to uphold our lives and the lives of, of our loved ones. Right. And it, and it carries forward because it's not just sort of the boat, but the boat is where Jesus is for, do you not know that all of us who've been baptized into Christ have put on Christ? We are in Romans six, united with him in his death, but also united with him in his resurrection. And it lets us talk about the reality of, of a God who would both save, but also condemn the world through a flood. Um, and I, I think in, in a little more honesty than again, that, that we would necessarily want to do because it's so easy to paint God as the bad guy in this picture. Um, and, and it's a, it's a, it's an analogy I guess I've used before, but I'm, I'm going to fall back on it that, that um, like my house upstairs, we're in my basement where it's clean. This is my little space because we record down here and my kids know <laughs> this is not the place to play. Upstairs, it's a little less uh, put together. Um, there, there's a mess everywhere. And um, it, it's a thing we've struggled with personally for a long time because our kids, uh, as they've grown, it's, 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 it's not gotten better. Uh, we've done like chore lists and everything the <laughs> magazines have said. And um, I got to thinking the other day, there, there actually is a way to, to have a house that's not messy anymore. Um, and it's, it's actually really, really straightforward. I just, I have to murder my kids um, yeah. because they're the ones who make the mess. Like if you don't <laughs> want to mess, just you, you kill. And, and in the same way, like we could live in a world utterly free from, and then you pick the thing that you hate that exists down here in sin. Um, but, but God in his mercy is not a, a God simply of, of order, but a God of love. And so love is, is a messy house. Um, love is, is, is a messy house that God is in. So, so after my kids get home from school, I'm going to go up into the mess and I'm going to sit there with them and we're going to read a book and we're going to hang out. We're going to talk in, in the middle of everything that is wrong. The question isn't, is it right? We know it's wrong. Everybody does, but it is, it is God found down here. And the ark being here, isn't just sort of God dropping us a lifeline to one day, make it up there into heaven, but, but actually him descending to be in the worst of the storms, to be the thing that that stands between us and death itself to to carry us through love is is jesus descending to sit with us in the very pits of hell and be with us every day through our baptism until at, at last we we have the resurrection we're, we're not alone down here but but your baptism your ark all of these things they're actually that that's where jesus is and that's why you stay in the boat because you stay where where jesus is that's where love is right. that's where help is the, he comes and sits with us in the mess Right. You see that in the hospital room. You see that in the in the courtroom. You see that in in the family room uh, in your own home. That's right. Jesus comes. He is with us. And and uh, thanks be to God. Right. That he is with us in 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 body and in, in soul. He is um, he has risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, amen.